This video is sponsored by Dark Zero. More details at the end of the video. In every good story, you need a powerful, ruthless, confident villain. White left flank, oh! Zero knocks Legenda, that's huge! Sakuma. A villain with a goal that will not let anyone stand in their way of achieving it. And within the last year of Apex, there's only one player that has risen to this status. He has the highest ALGS earnings, three LAN championships, and only one person can rival him for the number one IGL in the game. He's described as toxic and cutthroat, but also so hardworking and passionate. But one thing everyone agrees on is that he has a winning mentality like no other. Yeah, I just don't like losing. That's about it. But this entire time, he's remained mysterious. No one knows his story. So how did he get to the point of being called a villain? And is it even true? Welcome to the story of Zero, Apex's number one villain. Zero's roots in competitive gaming start back in 2014 with Destiny 1 when he was only 14. Like I had 7k hours, I like, like played scrims the whole time, like some 20s. First game I made money from, that's what started it all. Cuffs and carries for trials. That was bank in D1, it was crazy. When I was like 14, 15, 16, like 1k a weekend, I was like a 15 year old. Pretty fucking cool. Around the age of 17 to 18, Zero got his first real gaming PC and began dumping thousands of hours into competitive FPS games. Then rolled around the first week of February 2019, Zero's friends told him about this new BR, Apex Legends, and Zero never looked back. In the beginning of Apex, Zero peaked at 13th on the overall kill leaderboard and became the number two lifeline with 34,000 kills between season zero and season on. one of Apex. The 75% fast heal go back and you just be hop around and pop a bat in one second. Those were the days. But he wanted more. I just went to like, I was like 18 years old. I went to like these two lands alone. I played two Brisbane lands. I don't know if they're on Wikipedia or not, but I won like $200 cash each. And that was like, oh, this is sick. Like two random guys I never met before. And then he won his first big prize, $10,000 at the Australian Open. His strong performance in the early tournaments of Apex got him invited to the Poland preseason invitational in September, 2019. It was Apex's first official land and it changed everything. Now 17 squads remaining, gonna have to fly in and that storm is it's gonna be hitting pretty hard. Zero needs to be careful here. Take a look. Can he get through? Yes, indeed. Q's back out of the ring and now back into the safe zone. Oh, Thermite it comes in as well. Can he get? No, he goes down. Oh. And excellence will be wiped. He placed 67th out of 80 teams. My first land, I came 67th. I watched him win. I was like, this is what I want to do. That feeling of watching from the sidelines at land was something Zero never wanted to do again. Between 2020 all the way to 2022, Zero put thousands of hours into becoming the best Apex player, playing the game 10 to 12 hours a day and spending all his free time reviewing VODs. We know how talented this roster of MT, Sharky, and Zero is, but Zero is having a field day with a triple take right now. Invade gone and tension turns over to a Steve PB. Three on one at the moment for Reignite and finally- He was simply outworking the competition and would not accept anything but the win. And as such, in the Apex South region, he won the most ALGS tournaments compared to any other individual player. And he built a team with two of the best teammates in the world. Uh, often overlooked part of esports is like just straight up talent. And Jen and Sharky are the two most talented players to ever come out of Australia in basically any game, I think. Hajime Sharky. Uh, there was like a ADR Discord in OS back in the day. And uh, there was like tiers. So there was like 1300, 1400, 1500 ADR. And Sharky was one of two people, 1500 ADR. And I was like, I got pretty fucking good. Okay, then you get picked up by Reignite and you rejoin Templix and Jen Burton. Is it, did you meet Jen through uh, Templix or how did you guys meet? Funny story. But Jen came to PC during the first six OTs in OS and everyone was absolutely convinced he was Zimming. But we like, we talk shit so much to him. Like he never wanted to team with me. I was competing and I used to kill him a lot. He used to get pretty mad. So he used to call me a cheater and all that. So that's how we like got to know each other in a way. But we were convinced he was cheating because he was so much better than his teammates. He was LFT. Uh, Temp is the one who reported him to respawn for, to get like checked because we all of us, like the whole group, were convinced. And we played a, we played 120 and FFL together. Me, Jen and Temp because I had to sub and we won. And that was like this basically the start of it. In fact, in split two, Sharky, Zero and Jen Burton finished first four times out of the six. Holy shit! Massive win for Reignite in the end. Down can... zero on Sharky. It still feels like they're going to take this one out. Yeah, they have the better position, of course, and the challenge comes through. But Reignite will walk away without a doubt 
They will be the team at the top of the so lobby. So how did the number one player from Apex South end up becoming Apex's villain? Well, the first indications of it happened when Apex returned to LAN in 2022. Although Zero was going into these lands with so much success, his lack of streaming and using other socials had no one expecting their team to do well. Apex South was also seen as one of the weaker regions, and Zero never felt he got the recognition he deserved. Basically, no one knew who he were. We used to have to sneak into NA scrims because they banned every other region. And we would just name change to like the dumbest names ever. A few NAs who like even knew who you were. So I like always liked them. Like Fun is one of them. He like paid attention. All the Optic guys have always paid attention. But I was like basically it. To top it off at the Sweden land, Jen Burton, who at the time was undoubtedly seen as the best controller player in the world, was unable to compete due to testing positive for COVID. There's rumors going around that I was a bioterror spreading COVID on purpose. That's what they called me back in Sweden. Having to team up with JMW, never having met him before, or even talk to him. Zero was tasked with making the best out of a rough situation. And that's when they shocked the Apex world. Side as well, and teams ahead of them. So they better hope they have enough cover. In the meantime, Zero's going fishing again with the Kraber. And we've got domes galore. Fortunately, they've got high ground. And look at the three piece come. They know they've got to make some plays, but Zero with another headshot on the Kraber. Don't do it to him. In that miss. With a quick start on Championship Sunday, they were one of the first teams on match point and had the first opportunity to close the tournament out. Luminosity Gaming has a chance. They're the best opportunity to keep this tournament alive. Three squads left, Reignite, the only squad here in this lobby that's at match point, having the opportunity to try to close out this entire finals. Here comes the Caustic Ultimate. Oh. It's gonna tick, it's gonna tick. You see them right here, Sharky gets taken down. They don't oh, really get him in, they're punching him in. Yeah, they get the res onto Sharky, they couldn't get the dirty. This is still winnable. Nice. They res Sharky, Sharky this is, is back in the game. Full forces now. And here we go, Sharky, let's go. He's hiding and waiting. They get back and reset here and the other two teams are gonna fight. Rig might actually win this and end the tournament here. Up the gaming is engaging with Luminosity, reignite and go in for the third party and take this entire victory. LG is out, Optic Gaming skill case for the oh, 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 win. Get the oh, my God. God. Europe and wins the ALGS split to playoff champion. Achieving his biggest goal, Zero didn't think it could get much better. He was even playing Apex significantly less leading up to champs. You know, like me and Sharky played old school RuneScape for a month straight without touching Apex before land. Like we've done it, you know. Uh, GG, all good. But there is a reason people talk about his unmatched winning mentality. I compare Zero to Michael Jordan, not because of actual success, the, the wins, but because of that hardcore mentality that he, he comes into practice and matches every single day. Because when it came time to compete at the biggest Apex tournament, his competitive drive showed Jen up. Burton, he's pushed me to improve this entire time and try and keep up with him. The next one, champs, we're bringing it home with him for sure. Behind us. Bubble, bubble, can it? Yeah, 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 I bobbed. If there was ever a zone pool to give this a win, now would be the time. We predicted that this is exactly where the circle is going to be pulling. We see this sometimes, hanging out outside of the fence line from where TSM is sitting in the train cart. Up there. He's going to monk me. I don't know, fucking somewhere. Just, we need to be holding the backside. Oh my oh, god! Yeah, just okay, come back okay. and chill. I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. There is that iconic clip, though, in that final game where he's like, Jen, how's it feel to be a world champion before yeah. the circle's <laughs> even closed? Jen. Yes. How's it feel to be a land champion? Shut up! What do you mean? A level a of confidence in a, in a game like that. Our team's full of confidence. Bro, I think I'm not chilling, bro. <gasps> five squads remain. Space Station, Dark Zero, and GMT on match point. Optic and TSM. Fallout Dark. Zero have the best Mate. spot. Oh, the the yeah, I'm looking, shooting. My Double. Optic Gaming takes out TSM. TSM kills Optic Gaming. They're taking yeah, each right, other. Right. Right. Dead. Crack the Valk. I'm just. My stick is out. GMT is out. Space Station Gaming has a chance. DC has total control He's here. Out. Dark Zero looking to go back to back. They take DC out. The dial goes down here, and here we go. Are they gonna do it? <laughs> the back to back champions. Yes, and they DC. Are. DC. The back to back oh champions. Kill is placed, and now Dark Zero is going to be your champions of the Apex Legends Global Series. They win the Sweden. They win champs.
Put some respect on Apex now. Winning the first two lands in three years, Dark Zero was starting to cement themselves somewhat of a dynasty. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. But how did that hold up in year three? Something people began to notice during champs was the way Zero communicated with his teammates. What have we just done? What? We got spammed inside. We got shot from the- What the fuck the, is he doing, man? The platform, the platform. How? Jen said he's fucking going back and he's cracked. You go take a 1v1? No! no, I can't just- it can be described as hardcore. Some people go so far as to call it toxic. What it truly showed is that Zero had some of that villain nature in him, and he only had the highest expectations. I wasn't as competitive before Zero, but ever since I joined Zero, he made me into a more competitive person. I wanted to win everything and just be the best I could. Definitely influenced me in a good way. Just before champs, the North American organization Dark Zero picked up the trio. From a team that no one knew less than one year prior to the back-to-back -back world champions, there was a lot of pressure and expectations for them to perform well during this move to North America. America. And unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. In Split 1, they struggled to find consistent placements week to week. Switching regions meant that their drop spot at Lava Siphon was no longer free. This was one of the strongest POIs on World's Edge, which previously gave them a massive advantage in Apex L. But coming to NA, they had to contest TSM, and DZ had zero experience doing that. We caught TSM for one day and got 3 0'd because they just spent two months contesting BRD. It was honestly my fault. We didn't know enough work for the con. Got embarrassed, had to leave. There were also meta changes. Characters were 90% of the problem. Sharky, who was known for being a top three Gibraltar player, had to switch between Seer and Watson, with Gibby being pushed out of the meta. This caused a big period of relearning for the team. So combine that with flex dropping, and they were going into the regional final at 13th place, and only 10 teams qualified. Hero, who joined the battle late, they have full red Evo shields and surely are in one of the best positions to win this right now but they've still got to hit their shots and the shots will be here as optic gaming get eliminated we're down to two make it down to one dark zero will take game number two when they esports have arena ended the match point final in game five dark zero was sitting in second place but was this enough to get them to land yes. find out who's going to land in north america He's dark zero, dark zero make it. It. oh my oh god, my god. And while making land was a good sign, they were never able to regain their footing. On World's Edge, they were forced to flex drop all over the map, going to Lava Fisher, Big Mod, and even sometimes Survey Camp. This is not something you'd expect to see a two-time land champion team have to do. And as such, it was the first time that they fell into the loser's bracket. Dark Zero will have to fight for a chance to 3 -peat. And Zero's frustration about losing became more clear. Terrible fucking fuck. I suck. Huh? We could have one more kills, but yeah, no, I fucking suck. It's random, like stupid fucking way, bro. What are you doing? Shut the fang. Dude, are you fucking brain dead? Bro, I didn't think that was kind of fucking. What are me. you fucking? I didn't and in think finals, they only went home with 13th place. In the way that you won in your DMs, Dark Zero is the first squad to get eliminated. A team can't be expected to win every single time, but this was a far cry performance from their previous appearances. So they made big changes. Like, we were like a whole different team. They moved to drop at Fragment and ensured that they wouldn't let any teams push them off in a contest. He was going to show that he was one of the best IGLs and Dark Zero could easily be a top team in the toughest region. Within the first four weeks, they were appearing to be back on top. Zero went absolutely crazy on Storm.
But this split would present Zero with some of his toughest challenges when Sharky decided to retire from Apex. I mean, me and Sharky were like best friends. Like I, I wanted to play the entire time I played Apex with Sharky. Zero and Sharky had been competing with each other since June of 2019 when trying to qualify for the X Games land. People thought I was super toxic because I screamed at Sharky all the time, right? But like growing up playing high level sport in Australia, especially, you're gonna have coaches who go crazy on you. So me, I asked Sharky, he was fine with it. And Zero had massive respect for his skill. When he got too good at something, he would stop trying and he'd be bored he's okay funny story he played all of season like the first three seasons on wraith but never queued because he thought it was too easy he wanted to make the game harder so he just never wraith queued they've won countless tournaments together and when they're not playing apex they were always gaming together there was like no, nothing anything ever between us and the old third situation was pretty just depressing i was getting blamed for like all of it as well and uh halfway through split two i was just like i don't really want to play anymore i was like ready to retire pretty much this situation snowballed into several events that would create backlash falling on Zero's shoulders. Dark Zero added Rambo as their interim third player and planned to compete with him until after the regional final, where they would trial new players. Like, if I'm not happy, I'm not happy. I'm like, I mean, I'm not gonna like be okay with being average. I'd, I'd rather quit the game. Rambo was fine. He played well. He's a great guy, 100%. The other weeks, uh, one of them became like seventh or eighth. Uh, like, it was 100% my fault. But through a series of miscommunication, DZ didn't notice the roster lock for the split two playoffs LAN was set before the regional final. By the time they noticed this, if they wanted to trial new players in place of Rambo, they would have less than a week to do so. Then I wanted to try Aiden because things weren't going that well. And Ram found out nothing's really his fault. That like caused a few problems for a while at the, at the Hell stream. I just have no beef. Like I, I like, I generally love playing with them so far. Like I we've been doing no, fine. No, no, we we would have won last weekend if I played better. That's why I'm saying. It's no, not about both. It's like, I, really I totally bad. get it from their perspective. Fucks me over, basically. That's all I was getting at. But it, I like Zero wanted to trial Waltzy, Aiden, Shuby, Funk, and Zyno. But with three of these players immediately off the table, Dark Zero's decision yeah, came down to Funk and Zyno, both members of Tech's team, team Beat Lovers. Talk a little bit about Zyno, though. What made you realize Zyno would be such a, like, a good fit for the team in such a short amount of time of trialing him? Just the way he calmed and the way he used nades and moved around. That's like basic. I watched a lot of VOD of him as well playing comp. And uh, him being killed in pro league was a big reason for it as well. Poaching Zainu less than 24 hours before the roster lock put Tech in a very difficult position. Fans of Meat Lovers were outraged and Zero was catching a lot of blame for a situation he never wanted to be in in the first place. But he had to show he didn't care and just do what he felt was going to be best for his team. And with their first day competing with Zainu being the regional final, once again the team accomplished what most people would think would be impossible. Let's Shut up! Box! Box! Down! Zero! Batting! Batting! Get that fucking kill! Quick kill? Yeah, I'm going. Okay. For you. Fuck. One, one, one. You just did Popper Ranger kill. We're stalling it as long as possible. You're fine. Did you get that kill? Alright, so you can res maybe. You can res. Oh my god, Jed! Did you see what I did to that fucking team, bro? Yep, 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 yep. I'm big ulting, big ulting. Other one is the mine, other one is this is the mine, zero. Next one is you can swing ledge. Yeah, yeah, two seconds. I'm swinging up big ult. One one here, here. What? What? Push one guy, one guy. Let's go! Nice, oh, zero! Nice. Nice. No, zero, no, stop. Zero, 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 we got two teams now on match point, crossing that 50 point threshold. Nine! Take me three! No bang on, no bang on! Back shield! Back to the wall, I think I'm searching once! Yes, yes, yes. I'm looking at the rat! Yeah, he is, he is, he is, he is! Right to the wall? There's Venade in me. I'm playing for one side. I see nothing! I fucked up! Don't shot! I'm batting, I'm batting, I'm batting, I'm batting! batting. batting. They might swing, they might swing! Nice, they're no, gonna okay. kill the rat, they're gonna kill the rat, we're fine. Play this wall, play this wall. Dog Zero are gonna do it! Dog Zero oh. are gonna win it again! The match point specially, surely! See this one out, and they do! The regional champions of North America are Dog Zero and Jen Burton now had two months to get Zainu up to speed with the way they play. Zainu's like a bit different as well, because he's like a bit self conscious. Uh, during finals, he's like, ah, oh, my wingman's not that good, like, I'm not hitting Zainu nades anymore. What are you on, Zainu? Let me prowl there, no, sir, prowl there. You wanna run a uh, wingman? Nah, nah, nah. Well, I'm not gonna what? 
Sometimes it does. Bro. You're the best thing in the game, Will, I'm bro. Not risking my he like needs a boost during tourneys. I would say things to him during scrims, and he's like, yeah, I'd just rather talk about it after. Like that's all that needs to happen. I mean, he's always just been a really good like supportive teammate. Like, and uh, I mean, he just like hypes us up on like anything we do, you know, and it just seems to help us a lot. Like with changes to World's Edge, they moved to Harvester, which had been significantly buffed, and in scrims, See they that? were looking better than ever before. Well, last one, last one, last one. Land. The biggest story going into this land was the Aurora vs Dark Zero rivalry. By going to Harvester, Dark Zero was now contesting Aurora, a Russian team who had been landing at Harvester for quite some time. In scrims leading up to playoffs, Dark Zero significantly overpowered them in every off-drop contest, but Aurora refused to back down. Respawn and Apex were helping build the rivalry by putting their warm-up booths right next to each other. and sitting them next to each other on the main stage. They even ended up in the same group, meaning that they would have to contest on World's Edge in every round of the group stages. And to start day one, Aurora had changed their strategy for the first time and 3-0'd Dark Zero. I've just got to get an alternator and get in on their melee for a little bit of a help. And just like that, you said it, Gino. Dark Zero was going to be a little more hefty for them, but Aurora come out in style. Uh, as you see, the Amuts come out here from Aurora. Um, yeah. Three? Listen, Aurora's about to talk that shit shit. They're kind of making DZ look a little bit weak In here. round two, Dark Zero struck right back. CB does the same thing. Well, he jumped down the middle of Harvester. He's pinging it already, so he's going, bro. This man, Zero, is going. Trust. Uh, Ranches is challenging him this time. Yeah, but he's way behind, bro. That man is so behind, it's not even funny. He's getting aggressive on him, oh too. God, Zero. He's just got a purple PK. It doesn't matter, bro. It's going to be a 1v3 now, too. DZ Holy just DZ. Ranch is landing right in the middle. Gets a weak oh, man. The Syracuse is big there. But Jen gets a one clip anyway. That is a huge Jen. That is a huge knock for Jen. No one even went in the middle here, bro. Cleave's gonna try to stay alive. DZ is moving different right now, bro. Oh. Fresh man. can. Fresh can of tough beans, yeah. True. And Aurora is eliminated! In round three, Dark Zero wanted to put the nail in the coffin. So they surprised Aurora by also contesting them on Stormpoint in game two. Ooh. DZ landing on Aurora at shipfall. It's One Dark Zero! Contest. Dark Zero said, hey, Aurora! Goodness, DZ is so mad right now. Based off that, they want to creep the shit out of Aurora. This is really smart from Dark Zero. They don't want Aurora in the winner's bracket. They don't want to be contested on World's Edge, so they want to wipe them out now. Back here, back here. Back here. Zero. Humble down, humble down. Go down. Go down. Is there anything else? Sign go down. It's going to be a 1v1. Jen. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck DZ stands up. A little bit of a pop off Sneaky there. Sneak attack play? It's a little personal right now. It's all, I'm starting to feel things are getting a little personal. And despite going only two for three on World's Edge, they did enough to stop Aurora from getting to the winner's bracket, and now they had Harvester to themselves. Zero was trash talking the most, and the fans were eating it up, especially when Aurora was eliminated from the tournament. And Dark Zero cruised through the winner's bracket, and once again, were facing the chance to win it all on Championship Sunday. Time champions, Dark Zero! They were trading blows back and forth with none other than TSM, the only other team to ever win a LAN. Jumping between first and second, no other team in the lobby was close. The tournament looked like it was going to end in game six, but the collective efforts of 100 Thieves, Exit, and FaZe pushed the tournament to one more game. Dark Zero have to move here from the southern side. Yo, who's going for that corner? Just we fully played low ground, we're in the game. Look here, Jen. We have to in! Dark they Zero. The zone. They have, they found a position just on the southern side. And remember, Dark Zero are the healthiest squad we have now who are on match point. They are going to hide away by that rock. They used the Dark Veil, they avoided all the damage, and now they just want to slow this one down. We want to take room for. No, no, we want to see low ground. Okay, okay. 11 okay. squads remain. Dark Zero with the biggest chance of winning this one in this match number seven. Yeah. 
Remains still alive. Smokes go down, but it's Dark Zero who push on in from this southern side. They're working together. They have so much cover from these Dark Veils. But they're... I'm under fire. Daniel. I'm batting, batting. Daniel, I'm batting, Daniel. PC is the only team as a full three-man that, yeah. that can win the tournament. Trying to avoid all of the carnage that's going down around them, but look at what's happening elsewhere. You've got FC Destroy taking on 100 Thieves. FC Destroy getting taken down. Moist Esports fighting as well. Optic game. Otherwise, you might miss a kill. You might miss the damage. Dark Zero are still center zone. They still hold the position. There is absolute carnage around them. Vayne! No way. There's absolutely no way! No way. Oh, and there he goes on the ground lift! Hundred Thieves dead. dead. Fnatic dead. Oh my God, DZ could do it here. Zero now moving. Dark Zero, Optic Gaming and NRG. But Dark Zero, oh my God, DZ does do it. Down, it down, but no, DZ. here comes Zero. Zero, do go down. DZ and DZ, DZ wins. What a legacy for these guys so far. Oh my god! Oh my god! So they did it again. Zero has now won three out of the four lands in the modern Apex era. He's tied Imperial Hal for most MVPs and has the highest earnings in Apex if you remove show matches. He's the one pro that everyone is looking to be. Champs is kind of like a deciding factor whether or not who's better, Mira and Zero. He's fully embraced his villain era. I basically accepted a long time ago that no matter what they do, they're gonna talk shit. And like, if it was a different person, they probably would have quit the game. I'm not gonna like, like let anything like that really affect me. I've read it for like too long to like care about it anymore. But if you were to ask any of his teammates, they wouldn't tell you Reese is a bad person. He's like a normal dude. Everyone thinks he's like some bad guy. He's toxic and stuff. Uh, he's just a nice guy. Like uh, I've, I've said it before, but like, He's, he's just overall a nice guy. I've seen both Hal and him, Reese, in real life, and they're both normal people. They're like super nice. He's very competitive, and people like see that and just like, they're like, wow, that guy's just an asshole. But it's just complete the complete opposite, you know. That you wouldn't even, you wouldn't expect that, right? But he's actually a really nice guy. Very supportive of like anyone, not even just his team. Two major championships in. How proud are you? I'm very proud and don't These are the best and watching the best is always a great thing and watching our boy compete with the best is even better. In fact, if you look at every time Zero has won, in his moments where it's his time to shine, he remains humble and uplifts the people around him and the people that helped him get to where he is. Let's give me in the game, baby. Wow. JMW, best song I've ever seen in the game. Has to get picked up from the U. Of course, thank you, my parents have been very supportive, but mostly Jen Burton, best controller on the game. He's pushed me to improve this entire time and try and keep up with him. His Watson is like redefining the game right now. It's uh, absolutely insane. Like, this is Zainu's first Pro League split at 17 years old. Like, that just doesn't happen really. So, this is the story of Apex's villain. Do you think it's true? So this video was actually sponsored by Dark Zero. They gave me the amazing opportunity to get the first tell-all interview with Reese or Zero and interview the rest of their players. They also ensured I had full creative control over the project. The main thing they wanted to do is just give back to the Apex community. They just released their documentary about their time at the Split 2 playoffs. I put all the links in the descriptions and on the pinned comment below. So thank you, Dark Zero.